Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Essence. Welcome back to another video. Here we have a fragrance that I think is among the most daring of fragrances in my collection. And when we're talking about this fragrance, we're talking about spice, pepper, cardamom, birch, smoke, incense, even opium. This is a really unique fragrance released in 2015. It's by Beaufort London and it's called V et Armis. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on it, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin this video and I give you my fragrance review of V et Armis by Beaufort London and I tell you all about this fragrance, what it smells like, all the details, I do wanna mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like reviews, top 10 videos, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Also make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell icon and give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of content. Now, I also wanna mention that if you are interested in sampling or purchasing this fragrance, you may do so at Max Aroma. I'm gonna leave all of their information down below. They are absolutely amazing. They're based out of Long Island City, New York, fantastic customer service, really fast shipping, and they are personal friends of mine. And so they do carry Beaufort London now. So it's really exciting that I do have the opportunity to discover new fragrances as they bring them in. And this is one that I have been eyeing for a long time because it has whiskey in there. It has birch in there. It has opium in there. It's been around for six years, came out in 2015. And as I was reading some of the reviews online, I actually got pretty scared. So I, <laughs> I would like to encourage you to read some of the reviews online on online fragrance forums. And you'll see that people have really diverse opinions about this one. What I can say is that it's one of the most daring, if not the most daring fragrance in my collection. I think in many ways it puts Black Afghano by Nasamato to shame. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this one and I'm hoping that you find this review interesting and detailed in a way. Uh, and I also hope that it compels you to at least get a sample of this one because I think this is a really interesting fragrance to check out. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. Now, as soon as you spray this on, and might I add, you only need one spray, you are going to be immersed in this cloud of smoke. I couldn't believe it when I first sprayed it. And I usually am a bit unapologetic with my fragrance application. So what I'll do is I'll put on like, no joke, like 10 or more sprays of any given fragrance, right? Whether we're talking about an aquatic or a resinous or a, a woody or whatever. Now, in the case of this one, I did tread lightly. And so I just did a single spray on the test strip because I had read some of the reviews online. And let me just say that half of the people weren't lying. <laughs> this fragrance opens up very smoky. Like I said, you're gonna be immersed in this cloud of smoke, but it's so beautifully spiced. And I say that in the sense that you have the whiskey, which kind of brings with it its own spicy medley. You have the pepper, you also have the cardamom, and you have this opium note in the heart. Now, I think the boozy qualities of the fragrance are really where this fragrance shines because I'm a fan of whiskey and fragrances, whiskey and cognac. And of course there's Creation E by Roja Parfum and there's Amber Acalaria by Electimus London and a bunch of other whiskey style fragrances. This one, the smoke will initially overshadow everything. So what you're going to get is the birch. Now I actually contain birch tar essential oil. I've had a canister since about 2013, 2014 that I purchased from another website, New Directions Aromatics. And it smells like a burning forest. It smells like you took a bunch of leaves and you held a cigarette lighter to it and you just, you know, created smoke. That's what you're going to get in the opening of this fragrance. The birch tar is very heavy 
But then once you give this fragrance a chance to settle down, you start to sense the more complex intricacies that are coming from the incense. And so I do perceive there to be a little bit of olibanum in here, all right? So frankincense is the main incense that I'm getting. Not to suggest that there's like a churchy quality about this fragrance because I don't think there is. And if there is indeed a churchy quality, I think it is being overshadowed by the other ingredients. But I love how it's a nice blend of smoky and spicy with this boozy tonality that sort of runs throughout the entire, you know, evolution of this fragrance. This is the most daring fragrance in my collection. Absolutely. I have smelled a lot of fragrances that come pretty close. Off the top of my head, I would say Fumidus by Profumum Roma. I would say Black Afghano by Nasamato. I would say Laudano Nero uh, by Tiziana Terenzi. I would say A City on Fire by Imaginary Authors. But you can take all of those fragrances, combine them, and I think this fragrance is stronger. So there's something really special about this fragrance, even from a reference vantage point. I think there's a very uh, select group of unique individuals who would really enjoy wearing this fragrance and this is very gothic It's very dark. It's very mysterious. It's very um, very rugged and I know some people that are gonna fall in love with it You know if you are like that lumberjack personality and you wear, you know flannel clothing I think you're gonna love this one if you're the outdoorsy type and you don't mind just you know, creating the boldest statement ever with your fragrances. V et Armis is definitely the fragrance in your wheelhouse. If you are the type of person who likes wearing Nautica Voyage and Azaro Chrome, I think you're gonna faint when you smell this. Um, just saying that, just putting it out there. So <laughs> I think if you are interested in getting a sample of this fragrance at the very least, just so you can see what's, what's happening here, I would certainly encourage that. And, you know, even if I were another 10 years into this hobby and I've never smelled this one and I had somebody describe it to me the way that I'm describing it to you, I know I'd feel compelled to smell this one, at least from the, you know, vantage point that I'm operating from. I want to get my nose on as many fragrances as possible and I want to know about everything that's out there. But one thing that I will tell you is that this fragrance has really piqued my curiosity into what else Beaufort London has to offer. And I'm going to go with something a little less daring on my second venture into this house. But um, this one, I am really, really impressed, but I will have to uh, sort of retain my honesty here by saying that I think it is compromised in terms of its wearability. I think there is a very select group of people who will love wearing this one, but I think a lot of people also will find this one not suitable for most situations out there. But with that being said, let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, this is one of the most unique fragrances I have ever tried. Uh, this is one of the most bold smelling fragrances that I own. This is incredibly long lasting, incredibly smoky, dark, spicy, gothic, mysterious, somber, almost macabre. If you have a chance to, I mean, this is the fragrance that Edgar Allan Poe probably used to wear. This is so dark. This is so almost like medieval. You really have to try this one. In terms of the longevity, 20 plus hours on your skin. Projection way beyond an arm's length for five, six, seven hours. For me personally, the way that I would feel comfortable wearing this is if I did one spray on my shirt and I put two layers on top of it. I think that's how I would feel comfortable. Or I think that that's where I'm entering safe territory when wearing this fragrance. The complexity is there, the uniqueness is there, but it's so darn bold. And I know that that's what the brand was going for. So I definitely must applaud them on putting out a really exceptionally unique fragrance that really piques people's curiosity. In terms of the versatility, winter. <laughs> The dead of winter, when it's below zero Fahrenheit, I think you're going to love this one. No, but in, in all honesty, I think this one is very bold. I think this one is probably not for casual wear, uh, but for when you want to be introspective, I think. I think this one is great for a formal occasion, but like one spray. 
right? You are going to get noticed. You're gonna get heads to turn. Please don't underestimate the power of this fragrance. In terms of, um, you know, I think this one, a lot of people would argue leans masculine. I personally find all fragrances to be unisex, but there is something about this fragrance that is very aggressive and domineering. So I would say masculine. And I also think that this fragrance will probably appeal to somebody who is a little bit older, uh, somebody who has experience with a lot of niche and indie perfumes, and they kind of know what to expect in terms of fragrances that push the envelope and enter avant-garde territory, because this is certainly avant-garde, in my opinion. Uh, in terms of the you know, presentation, I think it's beautiful. The wooden cap, the Latin theme in the name, uh, and just the packaging, everything about it, I think looks really beautiful. My final verdict on this fragrance is, if you are a fan of smoky fragrances, if you like ingredients like birch and cade, and you wanna smell something that is outrageously unique, incredibly strong, but also avant-garde and a bit limited, quite limited in terms of its wearability for the most daring fragrance in my entire collection, even more daring by then Secretions Magnifique by Talibre Durange, although that's daring in a different way, I think you should check out V et Armis by Beaufort London. Super unique, very daring. So there you have it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did and you enjoyed this video, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Again, make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you next time.